In this week's episode, from a small family garden to supplying multinational industry players. But first, she is prepared to take on criminals who use children for sex work. bear the pain of seeing children as young as nine selling drugs and working as prostitutes. Kanyisile Mota put her life in danger and bravely confronted these children's pimps. She managed to get dozens of them into her own care. While she knew many of the children may have lost their innocence, she had a burning desire to help them build a better tomorrow. Towards the end of 1999, Peter Retief resident Kanyisile Mota relocated to Johannesburg because of work. I bought the flat there at the rear towers, which is at the corner of Abel and Lily, and it's next to La Rosa Hotel. I loved that apartment. It was just like home. But after a week in the big city, the Mpumalanga-born woman started seeing something strange in her neighborhood. I noticed that by the traffic light at the corner of Abel and Lily, there were children there who were just always standing there, chatting to each other, cars would be picking them up, and they were wearing short, short skirts. And I asked from the security guard at our building at the entrance, I asked, what were these children doing there? The answer was shocking. I said, no, don't worry, those are prostitutes. I said, no, you cannot say prostitutes. You see the ages there, some are nine, ten up. I don't think you are right. I said, hey, careful, those children are very dangerous. This woman was only 14 years old when she became a sex worker. If you're a girl, like a young child, there are guys who just take advantage of you. They like, they rape you or do whatever stuff with you, like tra trafficking and stuff like that. You do drugs for you to get, you don't have money in the first place. So you have to do something for you to take, get those drugs, for you to get food, for you to survive on the streets. Her parents died when she was a little girl and she chose to leave Pretoria and move to Johannesburg. I just couldn't stay at home anymore because the conditions went well. I just didn't want to live there with, that, with my aunt and my so just like, let me just go, do me, let me just go outside. Maybe I'll, you know, at least I won't have to live with someone who doesn't want me, there, someone who's going to be abusing me. Kanyisile patiently approached the little girls she saw in her neighborhood. After days of trying to gain their trust, she made a breakthrough. Some of them took a chance and visited her at her barrier flat. I gave them tea and bread. They ate like they haven't seen food for some time. So. I didn't ask them the names or where they were from. I just gave them the food. When they seemed ready to open up, Kanyisile cautiously asked the girls why they were on the streets. After some time, one said, ah, I'm talking. And uh, she said, Mom, I'll tell you the truth because you are saying you, we are to tell you the truth so that you can help us. We are prostitutes. Mom, we are selling drugs. But mom will tell you that we are not doing that for ourselves. We are doing this for pimps and drug lords. 
a gutsy and angry Kanyisile demanded to know where the girl's employers were hiding. Without even thinking about her own safety, the children led her to a nearby brothel. As we just we approached, when we were so close, one of the girls said, Mom, is this one, is this one? And I started shouting on top of my voice. I was, told the girl to give everything to her because they had shown me that they were selling drugs. And they showed some small plastic with something on the, those small, small things. And then I just said, come on, give to them. And they were just taking and running away into the water. Kanyisile later discovered the youngsters had one thing in common. They were orphans from across southern Africa. Before the end of the month, I was staying with 16 girls. Kanyisile decided to raise money through public and corporate donations. She rented out five flats. That's how Home of Hope started. More than a decade later, Kanyisile gives shelter to more than 60 children. Incredibly, 20 other youngsters are at universities across the country. I just felt like no one loved me and like my parents died, that's it, no one cares until mom kind of found me. I just like, then I felt that love, that, that motherly love, like, you know what? There are people out there, whether they know you or they don't know you, but they just, they always, they don't judge you for who you are, they just love you. Imagine what would have happened to all those children if Kanyisile chose to turn a blind eye. Send us your feedback and let us know what you think. Against all odds at enca.com. You can also be in touch with us on Twitter and Facebook. Still to come, she planted a simple idea and watched it grow to success.